reality, my mentality, everything changes so rapidly, and I'm ready for the never ending fire, dancing with my deepest dark desires, miracle, how empirical, don't know anything quite hysterical, everything around me transpires, as I fulfill my darkest desire. Yo, what's up guys, I'm Slavin your internet areas in this video, and in this video I'm going to be giving you guys a summary of the Blackbird epilogue, or the Fast Forward Frights book 6 epilogue. Um, so a lot of people have been saying that this epilogue debunks Golden Duo, which is a theory that Cassidy and Crying Child are both in Golden Freddy, which I'll talk about that at the end, but yeah, we're gonna just um, talk about the summary for this video, and then at the end we'll talk about lore and theories. Uh, a little bit of theory, like, sp sprinkled in there, but not too much. Um, where did I, okay, my book is right here. I'm gonna pull it up, because there's a, there's a, a lot of things that I want to read to you by the end. Not, not, not right now, but, uh, we'll get there. Okay, so, I have my notes right here. Uh, the epilogue starts with Detective Larson at, like, an abandoned factory. At this point, I was like, okay, this is the Fazbear T Emmer Entertainment at Distribution Center, I'm guessing. I'm pretty sure I was right. <laughs> um, so, yeah, he got out of the car. Uh, he got out of his car, and, um, he, like, he, like, took in the area. He, like, felt around him, but what he felt was, like, um, an invisible force. And that, like, threw him off balance, so he, like, tried to, to try to, like, um, balance himself. He grabbed his car. Uh, so, yeah. It's mentioned that Larson doesn't really believe in evil, but if evil were to exist, then, um, this factory is where it would be. Um, so, yeah. He, so then he, th he thinks he sees movement. So when he looks around, there's nothing there. But then he go he goes and he looks around and he finds a hooded figure, uh, like sorting trash. It's the stitch rate, if you can put it together. Um, it's Jake and Andrew, you know. Um, so um, yeah, he he was sorting like garbage and stuff. I'm obviously like all the items with agony and stuff with Andrew's agony infected. Um, and they're, like, sorting all that stuff, putting it into, like, a compactor thingy. So, um, uh, Larson sees, like, Foxy's body coming out. And he, he knows it's Foxy, because he remembers Freddy's. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure this is Step Closer, Foxy. Um, because, like, I mean, that's in the Fazbear Frights books. <laughs> so, um, so Larson yells at the Stitch Wraith to stop. But, um, it starts to step t uh, forward. Uh, now we cut to Jake and Andrew talking inside the Stitch Wraith. And, um, we, uh, Jake tells Andrew not to hurt Larson. And they start fighting for control over the suit. So that, um, because Andrew wants to hurt him. Uh, but Jake wants him, wa wants him to, well, not hurt him. Uh, so yeah, they fight over the control. Uh, but Jake was able to take over the control, and he pressed the start button on the compactor next next to him, and, um, then the Stitch Wraith, the whole Stitch Wraith, I'm guessing under the control of Jake, jumps in <laughs> with them, jumps in with the rest of the stuff. So, um, yeah, he, they jumped in with everything they collected, uh, it, all of that fell in with them, um... At this at this part, it kind of seems like Jake is about to get freed, but like he resists. He doesn't want to get freed because he doesn't want to leave Andrew behind. So they were both able to disconnect from the Stitch Wraith endoskeleton, but then Andrew was like yanked downward toward the pile of like items and stuff, like into the compactor. He was yanked downward. Um. So Jake tries to pull him back up. But, um, he was, like, struggling. Something was pulling Andrew down. Uh, so, all the items in the thing were kind of, like, radiating with colors, like, brown, yellow, and red. Um, which, oddly, that those are the colors of Freddy, uh, Chica, and Foxy. Not Bonnie, though. But, uh, I I'm gonna talk about that, uh, in a bit. Um, 
I mean, there's kind of a bunny later on, or at least a bunny. Uh, okay. Well, if I'm right about it being the original four, then, um, which I'm probably not, but we'll talk about Bonnie in a second. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna read this part to you now. Uh, I'm gonna find it. Okay, I think it was the next page. I think it was here. Um... Okay, uh... Come on, Andrew, Jake called. I'm trying, but I can't. Something's got me, Andrew called back. Jake felt like he and Andrew were being stretched between two forces. From somewhere beyond this dirty factory, the good feelings of Jake's memory boosted them. From below, density roiled around Andrew, keeping them anchored. Jake thought the density was Andrew's pain. Then he realized he was wrong. It had nothing to do with Andrew. Andrew, Jake said, there's something else in here with us. Sorry, I'm just going to lower that a little bit. There's something else in here with us. It's him, Andrew cried out. He sounded terrified. Jake focused harder on his memory. He ate a hot, salty peanut, and he looked into his dad's warm, happy gaze okay so andrew says it's him let me just ask you a question who else would it be other than william afton for andrew to be like it's him and jake would automatically know like who else would it be uh and why else would he be scared there's nobody else there's nobody else it really would make sense to be um, but yeah, this next part actually confirms it's William Afton, so I'll read this part to you also. Okay. Um, okay. Then, out of... Okay, Andrew was breaking loose. Then, out of the nearly fully compressed junk, the contorted but identifiable, identifiable shape of what looked like a burnt, skeletal man thrust upward, with ashy, see-through skin that revealed dried-up but still quivering organs. The man-thing looked like a creature from hell. <laughs> um, its limbs broken and bursting through the cracked skin, its face misshapen, its torso twisted. The creature took shape while Jake watched. When Jake, uh, when Jake saw the man's bones crack, fold, and reshape into what appeared to be rabbit ears, he yelled, Andrew, come on. Rabbit ears unfolded from the back of the creature's skull and stretched upright. And the creature heaved itself toward Andrew. Jake had hold of Andrew, and he was sure all but just the tiniest amount of Andrew's essence was in his grasp, but the creature was trying to keep hold of his friend. Alright. So, I'm guessing William was like, You tortured me? I'll kill you all over again, asshole. <laughs> so he, he tries to destroy, like, Andrew's spirit in the compactor. Like, still trapped inside the stitch rate, I'm guessing. Um, but then Jake put his spirit back into the Stitch Wraith, and William turns his attention to him. I'm just gonna call him William, because he is William. Uh, he's even name-dropped later on. Um, um, and William turned his attention to him. Jake fought back and was able to free Andrew from William's grasp. But Andrew just somehow vanished. Jake was still, um, being attacked by William, though, and, uh, couldn't break free. Um, but then he just fell back and was, quote-unquote, engulfed in blackness. Um, I think it implies, and in the next, the next part, I think it implies that Larson was able to see this because, like, he's, he's, it says what he, what looked like a dying ember fizzled and fell back into the compressed junk. So I'm guessing that was, like, what humans could see of Jake's spirit. 
Um, so he was able to see Jake fall back, um, but he had no idea what happened. All he knew was that it was over, so he turned away, turned and walked away, and I'll, I'll now read this next part to you, because this is also really interesting. The, uh, Stitch Wraith appears to be dead, he said into the recorder. He felt like an idiot. Dead wasn't the right word for what he'd just witnessed, was it? And what exactly did he see? He took a breath and spoke into the recorder. I saw an animatronic endoskeleton with a doll's head and some kind of battery wearing a hooded trench coat putting stuff in a trash compactor and pulverizing it. It also destroyed itself. I think the stuff in the com compactor came from the Fazbear Entertainment Distribution Center and also from the site where the serial killer William Afton, the one notorious for wearing a rabbit costume, died. He stopped the recorder and thought for a second. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> he started recording again. I don't believe in ghosts, but after what I just saw, I'm not so sure about anything anymore. I mean... From where I stood, I swore it looked like the Stitch Wraith was an animatronic contraption and there was some kind of supernatural light coming out of it. Like a ghost? Like the animatronic was haunted by ghosts? <laughs> maybe the ghosts were kids Afton killed, or maybe it was Afton himself. He stopped the recorder and sighed. Who was going to believe any of this? <laughs> Okay, so now that 100% confirms that William Afton is the man in room 1280. I think most people knew that, but in case you had any doubts, boom, there it is. And that also debunks um, Mike Perg, the theory that Michael Afton is who we play as an Ultimate Custom Knight, and he's the one in Purgatory. That that debunks that 100%. Um, um, because... Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to keep reading to you. I'm going to read to you the last page and a half or so, because this is also really interesting. Um, behind the unsuspecting Larson, the, compact, the compacted trash began to move, making a quiet rustling sound Larson didn't hear. The junk rose from the trash compactor and began to arrange itself into an upright being. As it began to assemble itself, the being sucked in all the remaining junk and debris in the factory. However, it also rejected some of the waste. Just as it started to form, the vaguely man the va the vaguely man shaped structure of trash shuddered for a second, and then it ejected part of itself. Shh. <laughs> And then it ejected part of itself. A mutilated mass of robotic endoskeleton crumpled and, cr and crumpled fabric spewed through the air and landed several feet away. When the rejected detritus hit the concrete, it lay still. The rest of the trash from the compactor continued its transfiguration. It formed itself out of animatronic body parts, but not in, but not in any logical way. They were all jo they were joining all haywire. Heads were being used as joints, arms as legs, and legs as arms. The torso formed from the hips and the and chest and belly of three animatronics, but each part was put in the wrong place. Hands were inserted at random all over the structure. Woven through all these misplaced pieces were wires and gears, which created a labyrinthine. A, cir a circulatory system connecting hinges to gears and screws and nails to eyes and noses and mouths. <laughs> With each additional piece clamping into place, the miscreation stood taller and taller until it was nearly 15 feet tall. I'm pretty sure somebody calculated it and said that was how tall Molten Freddy was. Hmm? <laughs> It was nearly 15 feet tall. Then, looming over the detective, it leaned to the side and li lifted a ma macabre head up to a neck made from shins. <laughs> the head, like the rest of the being, the head, like the rest of the being, was made from animatronic parts, fingers, toes, wires, hinges, 
Within those parts, two gaping black holes looked out through the looked out at the world with pure malevolence. And from the top of the unnatural structure, what looked like two rabbit ears made of even more animatronic parts unfolded and canted forward. They were aimed right at the detective. Zero pages. Done. Done the whole book. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> so William, like, forms himself using other animatronic parts. Uh, but I'm wondering what it's supposed to be. Uh, I didn't actually realize it said 15 feet tall in here, but, like, uh, I was thinking maybe it could be Molten Freddy or, hell, maybe even Scrap Trap. Who knows? Um, so, yeah. Anyways, a lot of people have started to think Golden Duo cannot be true anymore because William Afton is part of this titch raid. But that's simply not the case. Um, for a couple reasons. Um, number one... It's never really confirmed for sure that William Afton is in the Stitch Raid. I mean, he most likely is. But it's never 100% confirmed. He could have just entered there. He could have just entered now to stop Andrew. Who knows? We don't for sure. Like, why hasn't he said anything or made an appearance until now? Uh, other than in the Man in Room 1280. But that was before the Stitch Raid was even a thing. So, um, but even if he is part of it, that is probably just referencing Ultimate Custom Night. Because Andrew is supposed to be Cassidy and Jake the Crying Child. They're like parallels, right? Um, there's a lot of other proof throughout the games. Uh, and if you want more go evidence for Golden Duo, uh, go down into the description and uh, watch Arcade Endo's newest video. Because um, he explained it pretty well. Uh, went through like all the evidence he could find. And um, yeah, I'll leave a link to it in the video's description. Uh, while you're at it, subscribe to him because his, his channel is really cool. His content's pretty epic. Um, he basically, I think he's he just got to 700 subscribers, and uh, I wanted his his channel to get noticed more because he's really, really, really underrated. Um, and I also want him to get the ability to um, post community posts because that that's fun. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyways, in the epile. This is like my theory. Uh, I'm not sure about it, but I think it kind of makes sense. In the epilogue, William basically becomes like an amalgamation of parts, right? Um, also with bunny ears. <laughs> um, and it's definitely not the same character, but it kind of reminds me of glitch of the glitch trap suit. Um, in one of Matt Pat's GT live streams on FNAF VR. He mentioned that Glitchtrap looks like he was stitched together from a bunch of different parts. Uh, from a bunch of different, like, suits. I'm not saying they're the same thing. Uh, I'm just saying maybe this amalgamation is the book's equivalent of Glitchtrap. Um, because it certainly is a similar storyline. Because he, in both versions, he dies after Ultimate Custom Night and comes back like he always does. Um... Uh, it's a pretty similar storyline, so I think it makes sense, uh, but let me know if you guys agree. Anyways, I'm going to end the video there. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like on the video, and if you like my other videos, please do consider subscribing. Um, remember, to, remember to go watch that Golden Duo, Duo video by Arcade Endo, if you haven't already, and um, go subscribe to him as well if you haven't already. But yeah, I'll see you guys later, and peace out, guys. Bye.